to see you back, Jeff. Town looks great. 80% better than Korea, I'll bet. 100%. No medals? They ran out of them. Take it away. Take it easy. They didn't make you a general. They'll make me a general next time. Pick up the string of box guards on rip one. Set them in on the wash track. Pick, Pick up, up the, the string of box guards on rip one. Set them in on the wash track. Heard you were checking in. John Stanton called diesel maintenance. John Stanton called diesel maintenance. How are you, Mr. Thurston? Good morning, Mr. Warren. You've been away three years, and all he says is good morning. Three years and 43 days, Mr. Warren. Welcome home. Feel a draft? Ah, the old man ain't so bad. Oh, I almost forgot. You're taking the 8-3 in the Kent bill tomorrow morning. Well, ain't that Foley's run? He's down with Bursitis. What do I do, layover? Well, you can deadhead back on number four. How do you like that first day back and I get stuck on a relief? Uh, it's railroading. Where you staying, the hotel? No, Alex. Food's better at his place. <laughs> See you later. Yeah, so long. Carl Buckley, check, Carl Buckley, check with, with the, the yardmaster. Yard Carl Buckley, check with the yardmaster. Hi, Alec. You remember Carl Buckley? Sure. Carl was with me the night of the big slide up the pass. Remember? Remember? It was 30 below. Yeah, Carl's done all right for himself since you've been away. Assistant Yardmaster. Congratulations. Thanks. I've been lucky. Carl Buckley, check with the Yardmaster. Carl Buckley, check with the Yardmaster. Thurston still on your tail? Every time something happens around this yard, he chews me out first. Last week, we were working double shifts. That's how heavy the load's been. I'd get home nights, my wife would hardly recognize me. Carl Buckley. Report immediately to Yardmaster's office. All right, I'm coming. I better go before he blows out his liver. Got himself a wife, huh? Yes, sir, he sure did. I'm available.
I don't believe it. Where are the pigtails? Gone. And the freckles? Scrubbed away. Three years. Now they grow up too fast. It wasn't fast for me. It was real slow. Last year, I couldn't keep up with her. One night, she was out on a date, and the next, she was home playing with her dolls. <laughs> Is Jeff going to be staying with us again? Yeah, if she doesn't raise the rent on me. Hmm? <laughs> Wonderful. Come on, I'll show you the way. No, I remember the way. Is it still permitted? What? Kissing her. Why don't you ask me? Come on. I'll be the bellhop. Don't expect a tip. <laughs> oh. I'll have a million questions to ask you. I know you want to get settled first, but... I was settled as soon as I saw this house again. Mm. There. Now you're home. I brought you something from Tokyo. Oh, what is it? Hurry up. No, it's not it. <laughs> what is it? You've got me all excited. Hey, man. There. Oh. Oh, it's lovely. Shall I try it on? That's what I bought it for. Oh! Were the girls pretty in Tokyo? Yep. Did you date any um, beautiful Japanese girls? Well, the officers got a hold of most of the beautiful ones before I got there. Poor Jeff. Hmm. What are you going to do now that you're back home? All the time I was overseas, I figured that if ever I got back to run on an engine again, I'd be the happiest guy in the world. Nothing but a lot of fishing, trains, and for excitement, big night at the movies. Didn't you leave something out? What? A girl. The right girl for the night at the movies. Do you know her? I think she'd be exactly right for you. I'll introduce her to you one of these days. Isn't that what soldiers want the most? That or a good steak. <laughs> well, I can fix that up for you, too. Hey, baby. I took a walk, bought some stockings on sale. Look at them. Anything wrong, Carl? I tangled with Thurston today. They brought ten cars of perishables in on number one. Somebody forgot to unload them, and the whole shipment spoiled. He started to chew me out, and well, well, I blew up. Well, good for you. It's about time. You fired me, Vicky. Fired you? I just couldn't take any more of it. He's been trying to lower the boom on me for years. One mistake and I'm out. Afraid I'm going to get his job or something. Maybe you can talk him out of it. I tried that. I went back in to see him. It was no soap. I even went to Hurley. He said he couldn't do anything for me. Don't take it to heart, honey. You can get another job. What other job? All I know is railroading. I'm tired of this town anyway. We've always wanted to go east. Well, this is our chance. For what? Five years, I would have got a pension. There's nothing to worry about. I worked before we got married. I can work again. Wait a minute. I don't want my wife working. I didn't marry her so you could take care of me. Vicky. I've been thinking. What about this fellow, Owens? You think he could put in a good word for me? Mr. Owens? Why Mr. Owens? He's a big shipper. He does a lot of business with the railroad. Your mother used to work for him. She was his cook or something, you said. 
She was his housekeeper. Well, I thought you could talk to him. I need somebody important to help me. I just can't walk into his office and, and start asking for favors. Why not? Big men like him are used to having favors asked of him. You said once he liked you. If Owen puts in a word, why, why he'd listen. All right, I know I should have been smarter with Thurston, but well, you know me. One thing I can't stand is a guy trying to put something over on me. Look, baby. Call Owens. Tell him we'll come to the city tomorrow and that you want to talk to him for a couple of minutes. I'd rather not, Carl. Why not? What's wrong with a wife trying to help her husband? Come on, baby. What do you say? Are you sure you want me to call him? Well, I wouldn't ask you if I wasn't in real trouble. I got nobody else to turn to. All right. I'll call him. Long distance, please. All aboard! Mr. Owens, exactly what happened. In the yard, I mean. I wanted to know it wasn't my fault that Thurston had it in for me. You'll remember, won't you? I remember. Maybe I ought to go to Mr. Owens' office with you and explain to him exactly. I what can explain anything to him that needs explaining. All right. Say, did you call Jean? Yeah, she said we can use her apartment. You can wait there for me. Oh, fine. Mrs. Buckley, we haven't seen you in some time. Is Mr. Owens in? He's expecting you. Mrs. Buckley is here, Mr. Owens. Send her in. Go right in. How are you, Vicky? Well, you put on a little weight since you got married. <laughs> now tell me, what's on your mind? All the trouble I go to just to look passable. Zip me up, will you, Carl? You dames, you spend more time getting dressed. <laughs> have to. It's much better to have good looks than brains, because most of the men I know can see much better than they can think. 
I wonder what's keeping Vicky. She has no sense of time, you know that. She was the same way when we lived together. 6.30 already. If you're married, that's late. And if you're single, it's early. Well, how do I look? Fine, fine. Say, are you still running around with that Harry, what's his name? He went and married somebody else. And since he took that attitude, I didn't want to have anything more to do with him. So, I found another guy. A real doll. The only trouble is, I'm much younger than he is. But it all evens up. He's got more money. Tell Vicky I couldn't wait. And be sure and lock up before you leave. Okay, okay. And stop worrying, Carl. All women are alike. They just got different faces so that the men can tell them apart. She'll show up. See ya. I was worried. I thought something happened to you. Nothing ever happens to me, darling. You know that. Did you think I was lost? I didn't know what to think. So what happened? What about my job? You got your job back. Mr. Owens called Rogers, the superintendent, and everything's taken care of. Does that make you happier? I knew you could fix it, Vicky. I caught Mr. Owens just in time. He was taking the train for Chicago tonight. Come here. Oh, don't, Carl. I'm hot and tired. I, I'm going to take a shower. You know, I'd like to see Thurston's face when he hears the news. <laughs> He's going to burn. Honey, next time, try to get along with him, will you? Yeah, sure. Pretty soon I'll have his job. You haven't said anything about getting your job back. Aren't you happy? Sure, I'm happy. Vicki, we were gone five hours. You can't just barge in on a man as busy as John Owens. He had a lot of appointments, and... Well, then he had trouble getting in touch with Rogers. I telephoned Owens' office, and you weren't there. When? About 3.30. We went out for a drink. Where'd you go? Some bar. You should have telephoned me. You, you knew I was anxious. There was nothing to be anxious about. I told you Owens would do it for you. You told me? I thought you said he didn't like doing favors. What are we arguing about? You wanted your job back, didn't you? Well, you have it. I couldn't just ask him and run. That bar. What was the name of it? Some bar downtown. I don't know the name. And you just sat there for three hours talking. Yes. Miss Owens must have a lot of time to waste. He's got a big office, and he can take off in the middle of the day for three hours. What did you find so important to talk about? Old times. Old times for three hours, huh? I didn't keep track of the time. I was trying to get you your job back. And he was glad to help you. Did you thank him? Of course. How? Exactly. What does that mean? What, has he got a private apartment he can drop into for a drink? Is that the bar you went to? Of course. And we had champagne, buckets of champagne. And he has a bear rug in front of the fireplace. And we toasted marshmallows all afternoon. Now, will you stop being so stupid and let me take my shower? Sorry I'm so jealous, Vicky. It's just that I love you so much. Oh, don't pull at me. I'm sick of it from all of you. Oh. What went on this afternoon? He was glad to help me, huh? Now I see why. Ah! I've got the whole picture now. He's rich. He's got a big estate. Ah! I got his leftovers, didn't I? I got what he didn't want, didn't I? It went on after we were married, didn't it? No, no, I haven't seen him. I wouldn't have seen him today if you hadn't paid me. You've been making a fool out of me, both of you. Pound you off on me, didn't he? Admit it, admit it or I'll kill you. 
It's true, it's true, don't hit me again. <laughs> Get up! Get up! You said Owens was going to Chicago tonight. Oh, Carl, please! Here. Write what I tell you to write. Go ahead. What do you call him? Sweetheart? Lover? Carl. Right. John Owens. Message for Mr. John Owens. Mr. Owens. John Owens. Over here, boy. Three passenger? Sure, we're riding light. Crack one, please. I'll let you know what space I can give you.
Thomas Warren, one of our engineers. Did he see you? I don't know. Could you tell me where the club car is? Up ahead, about three cars. Thanks very much. I thought it might be nice to have a drink. Yeah. I could use one myself. You mind if I join you? Not at all. surgery. Say, I just remembered the club car's closed by this time. We could sit down someplace and have a smoke if you like. How about it? I'd like to. How about in there? This isn't yours, is it? Mine. Uh-uh. Now, you see? No luggage. No comic books. the door open just in case, huh? Case what? In case one of us gets nervous. Do I look nervous? Yeah, just a little bit. It's all right, though. It's very becoming. I had a headache. 
couldn't sleep. Well, there's more to life than sleeping. <laughs> Took that curve kind of fast, huh? Well, the engineer's a friend of mine. Hello, Warren. I didn't know you were making this run. Oh, honey, this is Jeff Warren, one of our engineers. You've met my wife? How do you do, Mr. Warren? Mrs. Buckley. See you later. What difference does it make? Why'd you take that money from him? Don't think it was a robbery. Sure carried a bankroll, didn't he? Not there. Burn it, Carl. Please. You like that, wouldn't you? We're gonna go on like Owens never existed. Better, maybe. How, oh, Carl? Owens was an accident. An accident I took care of, that's all. If you don't burn that letter, it means the end of everything. No. This letter's gonna keep us together. There's not going to be anybody else, Vicky. There's nobody else. Tea House of the Rising Moon. Eggs, Jeff? No, just coffee, Vera. I had breakfast on the train. Where's Allie? Out at the yard. Uh, fix the toast, Madam Butterfly. Did you do anything in the city? Uh, nothing exciting. You know Carl Buckley's wife? Vicky? 
Is that her name? She's pretty. Did you meet her? I saw them at the depot this morning. She used to work at the station in the city. The magazine stand. That's where Carl met her. A little young to be married to Buckley, isn't she? Does that matter? If she's young? No, I guess not. They get along all right? They don't. She hides it pretty well. You up? I was going to wake you. Didn't you come in on number four? Yeah. What? I had some trouble on it. Scratch my back, will you? Found somebody this morning up Rainbow Gap, murdered. Just came in over the wire. Don't stop scratching over a little further. Murdered? Yeah, knifed in the drawing room. There, that's it, right there. <sighs> Porter found him. They identify him? A man named Owens. He got the sleeper off on the spur. The police are all over it. There, that's good. Well, it's back to the line of thing like that. Not safe yeah. any place nowadays. It must have happened while you were on the train. Thought you told me skirts were getting shorter. <laughs> oh. <laughs> Vera, why can't somebody check the buttons on my shirt? What would you men do if there were no women around to sew buttons on? If there were no women around, we wouldn't need any buttons. Oh. <laughs> the body of John Owens was found in drawing room F of car 842. Compartments G and E on either side were unoccupied. Due to the autopsy report on the time of death, we are particularly interested in the hours before midnight. The robbery and murder took place sometime during that period. What is your occupation? Brakeman. Brakeman. How often during that time did your duties take you through car 842? Well, that's the rear end of the train, so I'm there pretty often. Do you recall seeing anyone who didn't belong in that car or in the next one? Jeff Warren. He was in the corridor of 843. He was dead heading home. He told me to remind Russ, that's the conductor, that he was waiting for a place to sleep. Mr. Warren, how long were you in the corridor of car 843? About 20 minutes. From when to when? I'll be just a guess. I'd say between 12.30 and 1 o'clock. During that time, did you see anyone exit from the Owens car? Yes. Who? The brakeman on his way through. Who else? There's a couple of passengers. Would you recognize them again? I might. We'll start with the car in which Owens' body was found. Will the passengers who occupied car 842 please stand up? Any of these, Mr. Warren? Any of these people go in or out while you were in car 843? No. Sit down, please. And now will the occupants of the next car, 843, please rise? Any of these, Mr. Warren? Answer the question, please, Mr. Warren. Any of these people go in or out while you were in car 843? No. None of these either. A lot of good that does the railroad. Murdered by person or persons unknown. Well, I've got the police checking the passenger list for anybody with a prison record. You think it was robbery? Could be. What about the missing watch? Can't you put a tracer on that? Whoever did it'd have to be pretty stupid trying to fence a hot item like that. Well, that's your department. We've got a... A big responsibility to the public. Sure, I know. The guy has to get himself murdered. Why don't he pick one of the airlines? <laughs> Buckley. Oh, hi, Warren. 
Buy a drink? Nah, nah, nah. This on me. Hey, we'll have the same thing again. Give Mr. Warren whatever he wants. Have a beer. Make mine a double this time, will you? You seem very quiet tonight, Mrs. Buckley. Mrs. Buckley? What, are we being formal or something? Her name's Vicky. Oh, here's Dust. Ask your wife for a dance. I said, Ben! I'll be coming. Ah, push his face in. What does he think, Vicky? Has a pick up or something? Take it easy. Ah, oh, take a walk. I'll put a ring in his nose. Do you think you ought to call it a night, Carl? I don't mind my friends dancing with Vicky, but I don't like no grease monkeys coming in. Yeah. Oh, let's go home, huh? Oh, wait a minute, wait a minute, wait a minute. I think I can manage now. Come on, I'll put you to bed. I can get to bed myself. came here, I thought I'd never get used to the trains. Now when it's quiet, I get nervous. Don't you think you owe me an explanation? About that night on the train? I should have told you I was married, shouldn't I? When I met you, you were coming out of the car where Owens was killed. You don't think I had anything to do with... I don't know. What were you doing in there? Owens was an old friend of my family. He'd been so wonderful about getting Carl's job back that I wanted to talk with him. I left Carl asleep in our compartment, and I went to Mr. Owens' drawing room. He was dead when I got there. It was horrible. You found him dead and you walked right out of the car? Why didn't you call the porter or the conductor? I was frightened. Not when you met me, you weren't. I didn't want to get involved. I couldn't tell anybody. Didn't she even tell your husband? I couldn't. Why not? You don't know what my life's been like. You don't know my husband. I used to know Carl pretty well. Nobody knows him. Nobody but me. I couldn't tell him I went to Owen's compartment that night. I wouldn't dare. 
He'd suspect something awful. I don't know what he might have done to me. Carl? Doesn't seem to fit somehow. He has a terrible temper when he gets jealous. You saw him tonight when that man asked me to dance with him. Carl's so much older than I am. Maybe that's it. I feel sorry for him, but... He's done things to me I, I can't even talk about. about this to anybody. But I couldn't keep it inside of me anymore. I had to talk to somebody about it. I'll never be able to thank you for what you said at the inquest. This is cold. What's the matter with you? Every time I go to touch you, you got some excuse. We can't go on living like this. We're married. We got a whole life in front of us. Oh, Vicky, why can't it be like it used to be? Because it can't. Every time you touch me, I see you in that compartment, standing over him with a knife in your hand. You think I can forget it? You killed him. That ought to satisfy you. Yeah, it should, shouldn't it? Oh, I wonder if it was worth it. Well, it's a little late for that. It would have been better if I never found out about you and Owens. Vicky, I love you. You think I can stay in this house without touching you? That's the way it's gonna be. I'm all alone, Vicky, and I love you. It's too late for that. It's not too late. If you love me, it wouldn't be too late. If you really love me, you'd destroy that letter. You don't care about me at all, do you? It's that letter. That's all you're worried about. That's the way you want it. That's the way it's gonna be. If I can't have you as long as I've got the letter, nobody else is gonna have you.
Is Mr. Warren there, please? When he's on the night shift, I hardly see him at all. When he isn't, he comes home, eats his supper, and goes back to Duggan's and plays cards. And when he's drunk, why did you marry him? He used to hang around at the cigar stand at the terminal where I worked. He was always so nice and pleasant. He looked big, solid, decent. That's what I wanted most, I guess. Somebody decent. You never can tell about men, can you? Well, they say the same thing about women, you know. I guess. Everything's so complicated. If you let it be. I wanted a home. I wanted to belong someplace. It isn't easy for a girl drifting around from one job to another. After I married, I, I felt a little unhappy. But I figured that wasn't so important. Most women are unhappy. They just pretend they aren't. That's not true. Anyway, I didn't mind so much then. I mean, when he touched me. But now I can't stand it. Everything turns cold inside me. Is it wrong to feel the way I do? No. I don't know what I'm doing in the same room with him. I feel lost, alone. I guess I'm not much of a woman or a wife. Am I? Everybody makes mistakes. The wrong job, the wrong marriage. I mean, the army was full of guys who were real glad to get away from home. It must be a strange feeling. What? To be surrounded by death the way a soldier is during the war. You don't think about it after a while. I mean, you're usually so cold or hungry or sleepy. Death. Well, it comes as sort of an accident. Is it difficult to kill a man? I mean, for a soldier. That's what they give you medals for. Why? I just wondered. Maybe because of what I saw on the train. No, it isn't difficult, Vicky. It's the easiest thing in the world. You make it sound so simple. Hey, hey this is some conversation we're having. I'm sorry. It's my fault. Someplace we can go. I've got so much I want to say to you. We'll find some place. Friday, I'm going to the city. Where will you stay? A girlfriend of mine has an apartment. Will you meet me there? Of course I will. Jeff! 
Can I come up? You'll get yourself dirty. <laughs> Thank you. I'm selling tickets to the Brotherhood dance. Two dollars, please. All right. Let's see. Thank you. I wish I could make this run with you. My father let me ride with him once when I was a little girl. Only then it was a steam engine. And I pretended I was the engineer. He let you blow the whistle? <laughs> once. It was so loud I started to cry. I don't anymore, though. Don't what? Cry. Huh? Well, let's try it and find out, huh? Oh, don't you dare. <laughs> Jeff? Yeah? Who are you going to take to the dance? I don't know yet. She's very pretty. Who? Mrs. Buckley. What do you know about Mrs. Buckley? Intuition. Plus a dozen phone calls. Are you in love with her? It's kind of a personal question, isn't it? I know it is. Are you? That's still a personal question. Is she going to leave her husband? I haven't asked you yet. When are you going to? You don't think much of the idea, do you? Well, don't forget about the dance. That'll remind you to make up your mind. About what? Hey! <laughs> See? I told you it wouldn't make me cry. <laughs> Kind of late last night, weren't you? Couldn't sleep. Took a long walk. You've been taking long walks every night the last couple of weeks. What do you want me to do? Punch a time clock? I was just asking. This is a small town, Jeff. People notice things. Yeah. You think something's on the quiet that turns out everybody knows. Stay away from her. You shouldn't fool around with a married woman. No good. Ain't right. Sunday's my day for sermons. ago, you said you loved me. I do. All right, then, what are we arguing about? I mean, we can't go on meeting this way. We're gonna borrow a department, railroad check. That, that's no good, Vicky. That... I want you to marry me. It's what I want, too. Then what's stopping you? I'll explain things to Carl. You're not chained to him. I am, Jeff. What's the matter? You scared of him? No. It isn't that. I don't get it. If you're not scared of him, then... Not of his beating me. He's done that before. It's the police, Jeff. That's what I'm afraid of. The police? Because of what happened on the train. 
Well, we'll go to them together. We'll explain what happened, how you found Owens, how you got scared. Oh, no. No, I can't do that. Why can't you? Why? The day I got Carla's job back, that same night, Carl killed Owens. I lied to you about finding the body. I was there when he killed him. He forced me to go with him. What do you mean, forced you? He thought I was having an affair with Owens. Were you? He was like a wild animal. He knocked me down and beat me. He called me names. He said I only married him because I had to. He hit me again and again and again. And then... He made me write a letter to Owen, saying I'd meet him on the train. I didn't know what he was going to do. He forced me to get on the train with him. He pushed me into Owen's compartment, closed the door. Why didn't you scream or ring for help? He threatened to kill me, too, if I did. Why didn't you tell me the truth, Vicky? Carl has the letter I wrote. If he ever showed it to anybody, the police, they'd think I did it. That's what he's holding over me. That's why I can't leave him. That's why I had to lie to you. Jeff, Jeff, if you knew what I'd lived through. I want the whole truth, Vicky, because if I don't go to the police now, I'll be just as guilty as Carl is. Or you are. Jeff! That's what you wanted, isn't it? You had to tell me about the murder, didn't you? You had to tell me because once I knew about it, I'd be in it just as deep as you are. Oh, no, that's not true. Isn't it? Where are you going? <laughs> Carl must have known something about you and Owens to feel the way he did. I'll tell you. Carl's always been jealous of Owens. I'll tell you everything. I grew up in his house. Carl knew all this, but he had this insane jealousy. He'd imagine the most awful things about me and Owens. And then he'd beat me and beat me until I'd admit they were true. Was to admit them. He did horrible things. They weren't true, Jeff. They weren't true. If Carl was so jealous, why did he send you to Owens to get his job back? He begged me to see him. He pleaded with me. He wanted that job more than anything in the world. I didn't want to go to him. I knew Carl would only resent it later. Oh, Jeff. <laughs> Oh, Jeff, I was so afraid you'd go. There's nothing for you to be afraid of, because I'm not going. If only I were free. We'll work things out somehow.
there's a call. Mrs. Buckley. Tell her I'll call back later. Mrs. Buckley, Mr. Warren will call you back later. you said you wanted when you came home from the army? What did I say I wanted? A job, some fishing, a night at the movies. Did I say that? Yes. Sounds like a nice, quiet, orderly life, doesn't it? That's what you wanted. You said I left something out. You said I needed a girl. I said you needed the right girl. How do you tell the right girl for you from the wrong one? By the way you love her. That sounds like the answer. But I wonder if it is. I don't know too much about the kind of love that makes people hurt one another. I don't think I want to know. But I do know there are other kinds of love. And they're not so hard to find. All you have to do is look for them. Carl's been fired. He's selling the house and we're leaving town tomorrow. He says I've got to go with him. You're not going anywhere. Because I won't let you. I don't want to go. There's nothing else for us to do. Not as long as he has that letter. I've looked everywhere and I couldn't find it. He must keep it with him. Well, he wouldn't go to the police with it. He wouldn't want to get himself involved. You don't understand him, Jeff. He's not thinking straight. He's all twisted up inside. You want that letter? I'll get it for you. If he finds out about us, he'll kill me. All right, then what do you want to do? What is there to do? Say goodbye to each other. I'll go with Carl. When I can't bear the sight of him any longer, I'll... That's not the answer. You'll forget me. No. It's no use. There was nothing for us to look forward to, even if I weren't going away. It doesn't have to be that way. Yes, Jeff, that's how it has to be. We weren't meant to be happy. It won't be as difficult for you. At least you'll be free. If I had met you long ago, everything would have been different. But now it's too late. It's always too late, isn't it? No, it isn't. It isn't too late. 
If only we'd been luckier. If something had happened to him. In the yards. Where's Carl now? Where he usually is. At Duggan's. Maybe because he was drunk, because he fell. I picked him up and took him over to the dispatcher's office. They're trying to sober him up with coffee now. He even thought I was trying to help him. You couldn't kill him. You tried, and you couldn't. It's all wrong, Vicky. The whole thing's been wrong from the beginning. And I feel dirty. You feel? Your conscience didn't stop you from making love to me, did it? It didn't bother you when I was in your arms. What about your feelings then? I guess it's only people like Carl who can kill for something they love. I'd have done anything for you. Except that. Yes. 
Yes, except that. You've killed before. Before? Well, the war, huh? I almost forgot. You thought I could do it because of that, huh? Well, there's a difference. In the war, you fire into the darkness, something moving on a ridge, a position, a uniform, an enemy. But a man coming home helpless, drunk, that takes a different kind of killing. Yes, and a different kind of a man. That's right. It takes somebody who doesn't think about anything but himself. It takes somebody who has no conscience and no decency. First, you had to get me to keep my mouth shut at the inquest, didn't you? A couple of lies took care of that. And I fell in love with you, and you were sure of me. And all it took was a little push to get me to kill Carl. You never loved me. No, it's not true. It's not true. I love you no matter what I said or did. That's the truth! That's the lie! You never told me the truth about anything, not even about Owens, did you? Why don't you say it? Carl did. I'm no good. I'll tell you exactly how no good I am. My mother worked for Owens. He had a big house outside town. His wife had been sick for years. I was 16 when one day he came down to the pool and found me swimming. He hadn't paid much attention to me before. And when he did, I was too frightened to say anything. I tried to run away. I tried to escape. And then later, when I married Carl, I thought it was all over and done with. But when Carl found out, all he could see was his own jealousy. All he could think of was killing Owens and chaining me to him with that letter. I thought it'd be different with you, Jeff. That you'd trust someone you loved. I can't tell anymore whether you're lying or not, and I don't care. Because it's finished. You don't mean that, Jeff. You can't mean that. You're all I have in the world. I, I was wrong. I shouldn't have asked you to kill him. I'll, I'll do anything you want. I'll go to Carl. I'll go to the police. Anything, Jeff. Oh, you mustn't leave me. You can't. Why can't I? Because I love you. Here's your letter. I found it in Carl's pocket. Sorry about the job and the drinking and the gambling. 
You kept pushing me away, Vicky. You even pushed me out of the house. Vicky, please don't leave oh, me. Take your hands off me. I need you, Vicky. I'll do anything you say. I'll never mention Owen's name again. Vicky, I'll give you back the letter. You haven't got it. You haven't got anything. You haven't got me or the letter or a job or anything. It's Warren. You're going away with Warren, aren't you? Going away alone. You wouldn't go away alone. Not you, Vicky. All right, I'm broke. I'm all washed up. It's Warren. He's young. That's it. And I want to get away from me because I'm all washed up. Oh, sure. How could you understand anything? You're drunken. I understand. Don't worry about my understanding. Yes, you understand. You're real bright. See if you can understand this. I'm in love with Jeff, and he walked out on me. You know why. Because I wanted him to kill you, and he couldn't. You never knew me. You never bothered to figure me out. Well, I'm going to tell you something. Owens did have something to do with me. But it was because I wanted him to. I wanted that big house he lived in. I wanted him to get rid of that wife of his. But he wasn't quite the fool you are. He knew what I was after. And you know what? I admired him for it. If I'd have been a man, I'd have behaved exactly as he did. Now get out of here and let me unpack! Oh. 